bit that Miriam has not mentioned, which it has a very great deal to do with, is religion. This has a great deal to do with religion, and we have what not does? so far what, what discussed does? the religious aspect of this, because Islamic State calls itself Islamic State for a reason. They follow certain principles, misguided in your opinion, misguided in my opinion, but certain principles that they say they derive from Islam. All right, look, I mean, I, I think it's very interesting that we would sort of try and essentialize Islamic State. Then. Similarly, you would say that Daesh or Islamic State is derived from um, Islam, Islam in some way. Yeah. Uh, but I think the problem... Hello guys, you're welcome. Thank you so much for clicking. Hope you guys are doing great. My name is Bukumi Bike Kram. So we are going to check out this video together titled Let's Talk About Religion. Dokas Mura Silence Muslim Politician with Facts. Let's check it out. And, and, if, and if I can say so, if I can say so, race. not only has it not no. got anything to do with race, but the bit that Miriam has not mentioned, which it has a very great deal to do with, is religion. This has a great deal to do with religion, and we have what not does? so far what, what discussed does? the religious aspect of this, because Islamic State calls itself Islamic State for a reason. Douglas Murray is at it again. In the iconic interview on BBC, he debates a Muslim about policies around how returning jihadists who have committed crimes overseas should be treated by the government and the broader impact of the Islamic religion in Western culture. Douglas Murray argued that the traditional route of prosecution faces significant obstacles, primarily due to the difficulty in gathering concrete evidence against individuals who have committed crimes overseas. As a result, he advocated for a multifaceted strategy to address this issue. He also addressed the elephant in the room, the influence of religion in shaping the views of people who become jihadists. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Watch. Miriam. Why do you say that it's a, a racial, there's a racial aspect to taking away somebody's citizenship if they're suspected to be an is Islamic extremist? Because where are you supposedly sending them back to? Let's take the most recent case of a uh, young man who is half, um, who's got, who's of Vietnamese origin, but who's a British citizen. This is the one we going know? through the Supreme Court. The Absolutely, appeal. he's mm -hmm. going through the Supreme Court at the moment. Uh, Britain wants to take away his citizenship. Uh, Viet Vietnam says he's got nothing to do with this. He's not a Vietnamese citizen as far as they're concerned. Mm -hmm. The only reason that we can consider taking away his citizenship is because we do not regard him no. as fully British. No, and that I, is if a racialised If I could just correct that. If I could just, really just, just correct <laughs> like that. Correct me, would you? The problem about, uh, about uh, what Miriam's just said, among other things, is you can do the experiment, thought experiment another way. Let's say um, a, a pseudo state was set up in another country in the world. It's not and a state. It, uh, I, I know it's not a state. You know it's not a state. They think they're a state. They call themselves a state. And a lot of people who burn their passports or go over over to fight for them, believe they are a state. Let's pretend another pseudo-state was set up from any other religious or other kind of background. If people from Britain were going to that state of any background or any origin, and they were cutting off people's heads and raping women and children and so on, I think this country would take a rather tough stance about it. And I think, among other things, one of the things we would look at was withdrawal of passports, among other things. Mm. If you say you are signed up to this uh, appalling state, Mi then maybe we take you at your word. Miriam's case is there is a racial... Element. But there should not be. But I think so. something Miriam said that uh, we really must come back on is that somebody is not considered fully British. Absolutely. You are either British or you're not. Well, then you no can't withdraw somebody's and, citizenship. And and They're it, British and citizens, and so we so, have to deal with. If I can say so, race. not only has it not got well. anything to do with race, but the bit that Miriam has not mentioned, which it has a very great deal to do with, mm. is religion. This has a great deal to do with religion, and we have what not does? so far what, what discussed does? the religious aspect of this, because Islamic State calls itself Islamic State for a reason. They follow certain principles, misguided in your opinion, misguided in my opinion, but certain principles that they say they derive from Islam. All right, let Miriam Any discussion that. of this has to take them at their let word to that. some extent. Well, I mean, I, I think it's very interesting that we would sort of try and essentialize Islamic State. They're very much like any cult or, uh, if you like... I, I, I think you can, you cult, can look at their, their origins. If you, if you compare them to any sort of cult or gang, there are usually uh, some similarities with the broader concept from which they're, they're derived. So you get cults that are derived from Christianity. Sure. Very similarly, you would say that Daesh or Islamic State is derived from 
um, Islam, Islam in some way. Yeah. Uh, but I think the problem is to take things at face value yeah, and to certainly to corroborate their narrative by no, accepting their view that I'm it is a state and that no, they have I'm the legitimacy to call out. themselves it, Islamic. It, it, it's uh, problematic. The, the Waco group in Waco uh, some years ago, everyone was interested in the religious claims they were making when they decided to become this millenarium crazy cult. I, uh, can, can if I, I can just, just finish, yeah. this, is a, this is a crucial thing we cannot avoid. I know it's uncomfortable, I know we want to keep yeah, no, avoiding it's not, it's it, but the religious all. aspect, think, which Miriam didn't want to talk about, is no, an a I, vital if I thought part it was, of this discussion. If I and it's it reliant upon Mus Muslims all right. of all kinds to if, take if that on and tackle it. If I thought it was vital, Douglas, it. I absolutely would bring it back. But I think what's important is when you look at, for example, these rehabilitation programs, because that's what we're talking about here, is how to deal most effectively with the threat, is that we are talking about using methods that have been shown to be effective in other contexts and with other groups. Yeah, and and those are, can I, just, can I just finish? They are, they are methods that have been used in criminology and criminal studies oh. for decades and they've got nothing to do with Islam they just happen no. to okay. be effective we're gonna, we're gonna but have to ISIS let you does have this. a lot to do with Islam we're so. going to have to Douglas Murray's stance on addressing the complexities of jihadists returning to the UK emphasizes a crucial aspect often overlooked the influence of Islamic religion on extremism Murray points out that even if jihadists misinterpret Islam the religions perceived influence on their actions cannot be ignored Douglas Murray has been vocal about the challenges of integrating Islamic beliefs within Western societies, particularly concerning the radical interpretations that lead to jihadist ideologies. He, alongside other commentators like Sam Harris and Ayan Hirsi Ali, points out that while the majority of Muslims live peacefully, there's a non-negligible fraction whose interpretation of Islam poses a security threat. Harris and Hirsi Ali emphasize the need for a candid conversation about the elements within Islamic doctrine that jihadists exploit to justify violence. Murray's argument is that ignoring the ideological roots of jihadism under the guise of cultural sensitivity not only hinders the fight against extremism, but also fails to protect the values of liberal democracy. I totally agree with Douglas Murray on this one. In a society that prizes free speech, addressing the root causes of ideological extremism is essential especially when these ideologies stem from religious interpretations that clash with democratic values. Simply enacting policies without engaging with the underlying beliefs can be ineffectual. It's important to foster open dialogues about religion, where constructive criticism is distinguished from phobia or hate speech. Mm. We should be able to talk about the influence of Islam on certain people without being labeled as Islamophobic. Mm. This is what free speech is all about. Okay. So, Dokas Mora is just trying to clear some things out here, talking about Islam. Even though their Islam is peaceful, there are still some certain people that portray it in a very bad light. And he said he's not asking what is the way forward. How can you really, you know, prove that those people trying to portray Islam in a bad light? Are you sure that they are not really Muslims? So she was talking about citizenship. This woman talked about citizenship. This woman talked about citizenship and also about British and she was just, you know, what I can say is that we should be able to voice out our opinions without we looking as if we are, you know, passing out hate speech. We should be able to pass our information well without people thinking that we are passing hate speech or Islamophobia. You get it? So, this is all about religion. You're just trying to tell us what... You know, the way forward when it comes to this kind of things, what do you do? How do you differentiate between the ones that are truly Muslims and the ones that are portraying Islam in a bad light? This was a very beautiful, you know, discussion about Islam, citizenship, and it was very beautiful to watch. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more. Like, share, comment. I'll see you in the next one.